it's beer o'clock on Riedel Craft Beer, be the Sainsbury's, and I picked up four beers from Green King Brewery. Now these four beers cost me £5.50, which works out at £1.38 per can. And I think for the session IPA, as long as it's what they say it is, unfiltered, balanced and easy drinking, is pretty good. This is the new level head. I believe it's been out a, a month or two, but for me it's new because I don't have a Sainsbury's local to me. So, uh, without further ado, get this box open. I have cooled this beer down. I reckon I've cooled this beer down to probably about six degrees, and I think that's absolutely perfect for a session IPA like this, nice and cold, but you're still gonna experience all of those malt flavors, all of the hop flavors, with it being kind of slightly elevated in temperature. Anything below four degrees with a IPA, uh, you're gonna to struggle to pick up all of the hop flavors, and you're gonna to struggle to pick up all of the malt flavors. So yeah, it's important to get your beer at the right temperature. So there we go, there's a look at it. This is apparently St Edmund. They're based in Bury St Edmunds, 4% Session IPA. Let's get it out, oh look at the nice green top on the can. Let's get it out into a glass, see what we get. Whoa. Oh, I like the attention to detail. I like the attention. To I was just about to fold the ring pull back and there's a little king's head on the ring pull. That is stunning attention to detail. I really like that. Right, where are we going? Session IPA. I think we'll put it in this style, kind of teku IPA style glass. Great to see all the regional breweries now, they're kind of making an effort with these newer world beers. Um, the Session IPA has been out a long time in terms of being a craft beer. Um, it, it's probably taken the regional breweries, what, best part of eight years to really kind of get on board with it. We got a one finger white head, good levels of carbonation. Uh, it's a hazy, hazy light amber coloured beer, looks very, very good. But what I will say is once these old breweries do move, they're like old car makers. They're like your Fords and your Vauxhalls and your Opals. They will take an awful long time to kind of switch over to electric, say. Tesla will come out, Tesla will start eating into the market, and it's only when Ford and Vauxhall and Open realise that something's biting their bum, that they turn around and go, oh my goodness me, we've lost X amount of money to sales with electric cars. It's a bit like that in beer. These older style breweries, uh, these kind of like, uh, there's a nickname for them, like Amber the Car Companies, like Dinosaur Companies. They, the, the, they take a long time to move, but when they do decide to move, poof, they move in a big way. So Green King have moved, they've made a session IPA. To be fair though, Green King have been making craft beers for a number of years. I was down at the brewery at least two or three years ago and they were producing kind of IPAs back then. Let's get the aroma then. It smells okay, nice and hoppy. If I'm honest, if I'm honest, a little bit of a butterscotch aroma on this one. Which hints at diacetyl. But I'd be very surprised. I'd be very surprised if Green King, an experienced brewery like Green King, would put out an IPA, a session IPA with diacetyl coming through. I'd be very surprised by that. Maybe it's the combination of the malts and the hops that are, that are 
slightly confusing my the aroma on the beer. But it smells spicy, peppery, hoppy, malty. A little bit of sweetness coming through. Let's dive in. Cheers, everybody. I'm going to go with the latter. I'm going to say quite confidently that it's not diacetyl. I just think it's a combination of the malt that the breweries decided to use and definitely those kind of, they're like a tutti fruity hop. But it does make you think, at least now it's making you think, is, is this diacetyl? Um, diacetyl is a byproduct. It's when the yeast is not given enough time to do its job. It's the beer is rushed, if you like, rushed through and stop the brewing process, package it, send it out, and it and it can cause a butterscotch taste in the beer. Uh, the, basically, the yeast wants to carry on fermenting the sugars, and the brewer's gone. No, you've had enough time. Let's package it. Let's get it out the door. I can't imagine. For one minute, Green King, with, with, with hundreds of years of experience, shutting a beer off early and saying, no, we need to get this beer out the door. I can't imagine it. can't imagine it. It's definitely the latter. A little bit of sweet malt, lots of hoppiness coming through. Let's let's talk about the the positives in this beer then. It's quite hoppy for a session IPA. In fact, we can talk. Let's talk about the flavours first, then we'll read the box. Um, it's lemon, pineapple, grapefruit, orange peel, flashy blood orange. Mango, a little bit of peach maybe, not a bad beer, a little bit of bitterness on the back end. So they've, in the kettle they've used Cascade, one of my favourite hops. In the Whirlpool they've used Cascade and Centennial and they've dry hopped it, which means they put hops in the fermenter when the beer's fermenting. Uh, Galaxy, Centennial and Mosaic. Green King have really not messed around with this. They've really not messed around with this. I think for what you're getting for £1.38 for a can, I, I, I think it's really good value for money. Really good value for money. I like that. I do. I like that. Um, description. A nod to the legend of our very own St Edmund, this hoppy, sessionable IPA invites you to keep it steady, just like Eddie. Beheaded by Vikings in 869, his head was miraculously reunited with his, his body by a ghostly wolf, and his sainthood assured. Tasting notes are a hoppy aroma with delicately balanced tropical and grapefruit notes. Pure malt, pure malt beer then as well. Perfectly executed, delicately balanced. I, I think th this beer can go on. I think it will be a firm favourite. I think if you're in the Bury St Edmunds area and you can try this on keg, I think it'd be really good to try on keg. Um, I think if you if you decide to go to Sainsbury's and buy it in the can, you're paying one pound thirty eight. It's cheap as chips, isn't it? Cheap as chips for a four pack. I like that enough to give it an eight out of ten. It's an eight out of ten from Real Craft Beer. Please put your comments in the comments box, subscribe to our daily beard and food reviews, give us a big fat thumbs up. Boom! Cheers!